Hello and welcome to Open Discussions for Women. My name is Annie Okoye and I thank you so much for joining me on this channel again today. This is a Christian based channel. I created this channel to provide a resource of encouragement for women all over the world. Um, God has really just placed a, a passion in my heart to be an encouragement to uh, women all over the world. And so with that being said, I often time make videos um, in regards to um, issues that we go through in our daily walks in this uh, journey of life. And then there are some times where I just want to share the word of God with you. And so um, I do that um, as the Lord will lead me. So oftentimes um, I'll have um, just a word that the Lord placed in my spirit and I begin to study the word of God and as the Lord lead me throughout the word, he gives me um, just a word of encouragement. And so I want to share with you on my last video, I mentioned that um, I had just previously completed a book entitled Keep It Shut. And so I spoke um, on, I gotta die. And that was just a, a, a statement that was written in that book. That book was um, on a subject that was entirely different. It was on basically taming the tongue, etc. Well, tonight I would like to speak with you um, on a topic that I also found in um, another book. Now, I finished that book. Now, I'm on another book. As I stated last um, session, I, I love to read and I'm always in a book. So, I'd like to introduce um, the new book that I'm into now. So, the book I'm currently reading, it's entitled The Spirit of Python, Expo Exposing Satan's Plan to Squeeze the Life Out of You. And so this is a New York Times bestseller by Gentazine Franklin. I do apologize. I may not have pronounced that name correctly, but Gentazine Franklin, um, he is a pastor. And um, so far, the book is really, really a good book. Um, he's basically um, explaining tactic, tactics of the enemy and he is basically um, showing the comparison of the way the devil work and, and he shows how symbolic it is to um, a python and, and he basically draws the comparison um, between the two and then show you he exposed the tactics of the enemy and try to um, paint pictures for you to know how to identify these tactics. So I really felt led to um, to share some of this. I mean, because the book is just absolutely rich. It has so much in it. And it's just amazing how much you can learn on um, tactics of the enemy and it's also amazing how much you can learn on protecting your salvation protecting you know your temple protecting yourself by reading um reading from authors that have been led by the spirit of god to reveal these things to us so the word of god says that my people are destroyed by a lack of knowledge and i am just so blessed to share tonight with you um, something that I found in this book entitled The Spirit of Python um, that I felt would be a great word of encouragement to you all. So on this channel, I always, whenever I'm giving words of encouragement, I also read the word of God. So tonight, I will just share with you what I'll speak about. Tonight, I will be speaking about the benefit of a midnight praise. The benefit of a midnight praise. So, if you have your Bibles, tonight we will be speaking about Paul and Silas. 
So if you have your Bibles, I'd like for you to turn to Acts 16th chapter. And we're going to start at the 16th verse. And I'm going to read. And then after I read, I will expound on what I've read. And I will share with you what the Lord gave me to share with you for words of encouragement. So, um... I normally always say this when my videos start, but I just want to share this with you. If you see me looking down to my left or right, that is because I have my notes and I have the Word of God with me. Okay, so I do apologize for the interruption. I am going to be sharing with you tonight from the Word of God from the book of Acts, the 16th chapter. And as a subject title, I will be discussing um, the benefit of a midnight praise. So let's jump in the Word of God. I will be reading from a study Bible, so the translation may be a bit different, but I'm, I'm reading from the Rainbow Study Bible, but um, I'm reading from the book of Acts, the 16th chapter, starting at the 16th verse. And it reads, One day, as we were going down to the place of prayer beside the river, we met a demon-possessed slave girl who was a fortune teller and earned much money for her masters. She followed along behind us shouting, These men are servants of God. And they have come to tell you how to have your sins forgiven. This went on day after day until Paul, in great distress, turned and spoke to the demon within her. I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her, he said, and instantly it left her. Her master's hopes of wealth were now shattered. They grabbed Paul and Silas and dragged them before the judges at the marketplace. These Jews are corrupting our city, they shouted. They are teaching the people to do things that are against the Roman laws. A mob was quickly formed against Paul and Silas, and the judges ordered them stripped and beaten wooden whips with wooden whips. Again and again, the rods slashed down across their bared backs, and afterwards they were thrown into prison. The jailer was threatened with death if they escaped. So, he took no chances, but put them into the inner dungeons and clamped their feet into stocks. Around midnight, as Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to the Lord and the other prisoners were listening, suddenly there was a great earthquake. The prison was shaken to its foundation all the doors flew open and the chains of every prisoner fell off. The jailer wakened to see the prison, the prison doors wide open and assuming the prisoners had escaped, he drew his sword to kill himself. But Paul yelled to him, don't do it. We are all here. Trembling with fear, the jailer called for lights and ran, ran to the dungeon and fell down before Paul and Silas. He brought them out and begged them, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe on the Lord Jesus and you will be saved in your entire household. Then they told him and all his household the good news from the Lord. That same hour he washed their stripe he washed their stripes and he and all his family were baptized. Then he brought them up into his house and set a meal before them. How he and his household rejoiced because 
all were now believers. The next morning, the judges sent police officers over to tell the jailer, let those men go. So the jailer told Paul they were free to leave. But Paul replied, oh no, they don't, they, oh no, they don't. They have publicly beaten us without trial and jailed us and we are Roman citizens. So now, they want us to leave secretly? Never let them come, never. Let them come themselves and release us. The police officers reported to the judge who feared for their lives when they heard Paul and Silas were Roman citizens. So they came to the jail and begged them to go and brought them out and pled with them to leave the city. Paul and Silas return, then returned to the home of Lydia where they met with the believers and preached to them once more before leaving town. Now, this is such a wonderful, wonderful word. Tonight, I'd like to share with you on the benefit of a midnight praise. What did we learn from this text? We learned from this text that Paul and Silas were doing the will of God. They were, they were working for the Lord. And while doing so, they came across a demon-possessed girl. She was possessed with demons and she was basically, in today's society, we call them a psychic. She was a fortune teller, telling people fortunes and she would collect money and give it to, a ma to, to her masters, as according to the word of God. Well, Paul turned around after she had been following them as they were going around preaching the gospel. He turned around and he was irritated with her, um, basically mocking and, and stating that these are men of God and they've come to tell you what to do to be delivered from your sins. So he turned around and identified that she had a demon in her. And he commanded the demon to come out in the name of Jesus. And when he did this, the girl became delivered. So her masters were so irritated that she could no longer perform this, this thing that she once was able to perform because that demon had empowered her to be able to tell people fortunes, tell them what their future hold. And she was making money and giving to their masters. Well, the masters were so irritated and they were just, in, just so upset with Paul and Silas that they took them, accused them of being Jews that were um, provoking the Romans to uh, believe what um, believe and practice Jewish beliefs, and had them sentenced to be to a, a harsh beating. Now, after this beating, they were thrown into a dungeon. Now, imagine this. They were beaten so horrible. I mean, they had stripes on them. They were whipped like crazy. I mean, it's ridiculous the way they were just, they were beaten just miserably. And, and after being beaten so bad, they were thrown into prison. And then the prison guard was even warned, if they escape, your life is at stake. Now, after being beaten like this, imagine, imagine if you were beaten like Paul and Silas was beaten in this situation. What would your response be? Would your response be praise or would your response be to get even? Well, I would like to share with you, Paul and Silas' response was praise. In the midnight hour, Paul and Silas, right in the jail, begin to praise God. They begin to give God praise. They begin to sing hymns to the Lord. And as they begin to worship God, they invoke the power of God into the earth realm. They invoke the power of God in such a way in which the earth experienced an, an earthquake. The word of God says that all of the cells were opened. And not just that, but all of the shackles were loosened, meaning that they were handcuffed, 
in today's society, we would say they were maybe handcuffed, but whatever they had holding them bound, it was all released throughout the praise and worship of Paul and Silas. Now it says that many were listening. It said the, the, the po police officer or the person on duty, he was warned if, they, if Paul and Silas were to escape, his life was at stake. Well, he was drifting asleep and while, while they were praising, worshiping, when he awoke, he saw all the cells open. So immediately he was about to attempt suicide. And Paul told him, hey, don't hurt yourself. Don't harm yourself. We're all still here. And when Paul and Silas, when, they, when Paul mentioned that, the guard jumped up immediately and ran to the cell of Paul and Silas, fell to them and said, what must, sir, what must I do to be saved? What are some of the things that we learned that would take place after a midnight praise? Well, I am so excited to share this with you. After reading the word of God, these are some things I found um, to take place after the midnight praise. These are some benefits of a midnight praise. An unmeasurable power. You think about that praise that, that they, they, were, they were praising and worshiping God and singing hymns to the Lord so much that the power was unmeasurable that was released into the earth realm to cause an earthquake. It says that the earth shook. So then, secondly, deliverance is another benefit of midnight praise. Think of the fact that this guard was about to commit suicide, so his life-saving is another benefit. So. Paul spoke up and said, don't harm yourself. We're all still here. So think about the power and the benefit from a midnight praise. There is power that is unmeasurable. There is deliverance that take place. There is a sabotage to the plan of the enemy for your life because the enemy planned for them to die in that cell, beat them seriously and threw them in a dungeon. The enemy planned for them to be miserable, for them to fall into depression, for them to be upset, angry, miserable, bitter, mad. Instead, they chose to respond with worship and praise to God. And look at what happened. They sabotaged the plan of the enemy. Also, another benefit of a midnight praise is that you invoke the blessings of God. They invoked the blessings of God. What were the blessings of God? The blessings of God were that they were released. They were released from the prison the very next day. What was the deliverance? Deliverance was that, that the young, the guard came to know Jesus Christ. What was the life-saving point? The life-saving point was it states the guard wanted to commit suicide. The guard wanted to kill himself because after all, they had already threatened the guard that if Paul and Silas were to escape, his life was at stake. So life-saving. The benefit of a midnight praise, you don't know who life is at stake. Praising God in the midnight hour, someone life may depend on it. Now, last but not least, most importantly, it is an atmosphere changer. A benefit of the midnight praise is it is an atmosphere changer. If you know anything about the Lord, you know that the Lord loves an atmosphere of praise. The Lord desires for us to praise, to worship him. So when you praise in a midnight hour, that you change the atmosphere 
in which you reside. Now let's see, what does praising in the midnight hour say to God? Midnight praises proves that you have self-discipline to command your body to arise and praise God when your flesh desires to sleep. So you, you are showing the Lord that you will exercise self-discipline to please him. And as a result, you invoke the blessings of God over your life. It also tells God that you are willing to sacrifice to meet him in the most sensitive time of the day for communion. It also expresses your spiritual maturity. How many people do you know can, can get up at midnight and begin praising, giving God praise, begin worshiping God? It shows your level of maturity. It shows that you're willing to make a sacrifice for your, your, your Lord and Savior who is a sovereign God. So what did we learn in this? We learned that when you are diligently seeking God and doing his will, the enemy will still attack. Paul and Silas were doing God's will. They were teaching the word of God. They were doing God's will when this demon-possessed girl began to follow them, which led up to all of the things they encountered. However, the major concern is your response to the enemy's plots and plans. And that's how will you respond? How will you respond to the plan of the enemy for your life? Everything is, is going wrong. Nothing seems to be working right. Everything seems to be falling apart. How will you respond? Will you respond with praise on your lips? If you can respond with praise no matter what you no matter what, you will literally invoke the blessings of God on your life. So that is basically the encouraging word I wanted to share tonight. The benefit of a midnight praise. I will read something briefly from this book entitled The Spirit of Python. A lot of people enjoy praising God in, in the sunshine. But what about in the darkness of a prison cell? Is God only worth praising when you feel that he's that when you feel that he has come through for us? Is he only worthy to be praised when we are blessed financially and everything is going our way? Let us learn something from Paul and Silas tonight. I want to encourage you, take a moment to praise God despite dances. If you didn't learn anything from this situation, you should have learned this. You can, you can be on your best behavior you can try very hard to work diligently for God's kingdom and the enemy will still attack. Know that God is still waiting to see what your response will be. It is imperative that you respond in praise. When you respond in praise, you show that you show our heavenly father who he is to you.